Uh, I'm Mike from IBM, uh, so yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the direct knife fragmentation. And uh, originally, it was talk talk was intended how do we implement some extensions to page allocator to reduce direct knife fragmentation. Uh, after running some benchmarks, I not convinced we need this. It's more about probably we don't really care about uh, direct knife fragmentation. <laughs> probably there is a question. Yeah. So uh, there are a few use cases uh, that uh, require fragmenting the direct map. Uh, these are all uh, places that allocate uh, memory for code. There is secret memory. And there are potentially uh, SCV, uh, SNP, TDX, uh, although I'm not sure they'd be able to get away with it because they don't pre-allocate memory, but rather they fragment it uh, as they go, and I don't really see how they can get around it. And uh, there was also a use case to use PKS protection for uh, page tables that Intel pushed a while ago, and they stopped, and probably they'll get back to it. I don't know. Uh, and uh, there was uh, some uh, patch set about uh, a permissioned malloc. Probably this was mostly targeting code allocations, so it might be not really relevant for general usage. So when we talked with Michal uh, about uh, the GFP unmapped page set I posted, uh, I realized that people in MM probably don't really know much about how code is allocated. Uh, so it's a brief uh, recap. Essentially, every every place that uh, allocates memory for code, like F-trace, K-probes, uh, BPF modules, use module alloc, uh, which is re-implemented every, by every architecture, by most of the architectures. And it essentially does uh, vmalloc inside the restricted uh, virtual address space because uh, every architecture has some own uh, restrictions where the code can be placed relatively to the kernel image itself. And uh, whenever the model RWX is enabled, model restricted model RWX is enabled, the all memory that was allocated for the whole kind of elf image of the module, like uh, code data and uh, everything else, uh, is then split into 4K chunks uh, so that uh, read-only data gets its read-only attributes, uh, uh, executable is read, uh, execute, and so on. And uh, the, the attributes in the page tables are not only set in the vmalloc address space, but also in the direct map alias, which causes a split of uh, large pages in the direct map, and allegedly it reduces the system performance. Now, so a while ago, I've sent a patch to create yet another version of caching of two Mac pages uh, to uh, reduce the fragmentation of the direct map so that uh, once we need to allocate a page for something that uh, needs a uh, different protection, different than default protections. We allocate a two meg page at one go, and then we distribute the two meg page in between the users. Uh, the whole patch and discussion is there, it's so just brief recap. Uh, and then uh, I went to get uh, the numbers. Uh, so this is a description of what I benchmarked. It was a AMD Zen 3 machine with uh, 256 megs of RAM. Uh, two sockets, a uh, trans uh, SUSE leap because uh, SUSE is the most uh, easy system to run MM tests on. Uh, and uh, uh, the benchmarks were with the uh, uh, 6.3 RC4 and uh, the non vanilla version is 6.3 RC4 with the GFP unmapped applied. Uh, and I used the uh, page alloc from MM tests. Uh, uh, other set I ran was uh, several uh, uh, database benchmarks uh, and the uh, kernel bench and uh, to add to the mix uh, a file. 
because when I did similar tests a long time ago, if I was the most sensitive benchmark to the differences in the direct map fragmentation. So uh, for every run, I had a, a background job that did mod probe and mod, mod, uh, mod probe minus R for 37 megs of models from net filter just to keep system busy with the fragmenting uh, the direct map. And the, the results are peculiar. Uh, there were tests that uh, showed advantage to using GFPN mapped, and there were tests that showed it introduces regressions. Most of them had terrible signal to noise. And uh, uh, so uh, the whole re set of results can be downloaded from there. Just quick examples. So the micro benchmarks are generally not very sensitive. Everything, every difference is below 10%, and the standard deviation is usually not higher than 50%. But when you go to somewhat more complex, like PG bench or mutilate with the memcached, it gets a more, more interesting spread, and here it's uh, like the most interesting. The standard deviations for both for both benchmarks is way more than the than it should be. Uh, it kind of confirms the set of tests Intel folks ran a couple of years ago that uh, they just used the four K or two Mac pages uh, for the entire direct map and run the set of benchmarks. And what they got, uh, that largely it's better to use one GIG or two MAC pages for most of the use cases, but it's not necessarily true, and the, the tests were as noisy as this. Uh, so my takeaways from this is a, a, another thing that seems really important to people is that people do want to have two MAC pages for code especially Thomas and Peter. Uh, you hear them constantly repeating that we need to make pages on for code and we can't, uh, for, we, we, we are better with the uh, lower ITLB pressure. Uh, I could confirm that the lower ITLB pressure is not bad. It's a while ago uh, with the more disruptive tests that uh, fragmentation in the, direct net fragmentation in the kernel image mapping actually brought memcached benchmarking by 10, 20%, brought down the memcached benchmarks by 10, 20%. Uh, and uh, there was some benchmarks, uh, Song Li ran uh, for his proposal for exact memalloc that showed a couple of 10% improvement on ITLB miss. Uh, I, I don't know how it will really translate into a real benchmark or real workload uh, improvements. So Thomas Glexner claims that the ITLB cat is very small. The, the twin assumptions of this is that the TLB itself, if we take a TLB miss, it's a very expensive process to fill it. One of the things your results and the reason for the huge error bars might be because deterministically the CPU is actually trying to do prefetching to cover up for this. So that might be one reason why the error bars are so big because you can't see what the CPU is doing in the background. But the other is I thought most CPUs had moved away from separated ITLB, DTLB, and they all use a combined TLB. So It depends on which level. Do, uh, so is Intel telling us that they still have ITLB, DTLB separation? In as A6? far as I know, yes. Yeah. Okay. And so um, the results I have are not related to ITLB. No, the results but... I have are more about DTLB. It's only about DTLB. So I, I don't know why T, ITLB would be better. Uh, but like... Thomas said that if we put every hot code in the two Mac page, in two, 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 page, two Mac pages will be just way better. 
I don't know what benchmark he did run and what results he had. It's just a citation from the mail discussion. That's rule of thumb. I mean, if you've got two mags in the ITLB, you've got one entry. The question if you get ITLB miss whenever you get into the kernel anyway. Plus the mail. Yeah, just wanted to know that you run the benchmarks on AMD and not Intel, right? So. Um, Yes. So that's can also. I don't different. think there's that significant difference. Well, I, I ran them on Intel once, and it was quite similar. So, in, in answer to James's question, I'm looking at my um, 11th gen uh, Core i7 here. It has uh, separate L1 i cache and D cache um, TLBs, and it's also got. And it's actually split out the D cache into separate store only TLB and load only TLB. So that they're, they're adding more, not not unifying. Well, it, it, it's what it reports. So another question, uh, if you can put there back. back that, yeah. So, so what, what is the Peters solution for everybody using two megabytes? Well, can you repeat, Vasily? What what is the Peters Ostra solution? Link that so everyone uses. I, I, I hear him repeating this on IRC mostly and in different uh, that we need. A, there was a solution a, on the one of the earlier exec memaloc patches song proposed, and uh, Peter uh, suggested to use two vmaloc areas for module data and for module code, and then uh, everything that goes to module code can be mapped with two megs, and uh, that solves uh, the. That solves the issue. Yeah, so my, my question would be, uh, have you tried to compare your uh, results with uh, uh, a worst case where you split everything into 4K pages? For the I program? had it last year, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what I measured previously when I just uh, made make the entire direct map flat 4K or 2 megs, uh, there is a, uh, there is degradation of a uh, single digit percent in most of the benchmarks. Sometimes 4K sh shows better results for some reason. And uh, most of the time, two meg uh, pages won uh, on the system I had then. Uh, but it never went up above 5%, the difference. Another question, did, did, since now you use the background uh, module load unload to perturb the system. Did you also try not doing that and seeing how much it actually affects these perturbances? It was more or less the same. Like the, the differences between results were more or less the same. No, I mean, uh, you not mean between the non-patched and patched, but between no perturbance and perturbance, whether it even does something to the to the workloads that I, you benchmark. I don't think I did it. I can do it. It'll take a couple of weeks, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't check this, uh, but I did the test with just fragmenting everything to the... Yeah, of, of course, it can have more effects than just the fragmentation uh, because uh, yeah, it can uh, be taking some logs uh, yeah. uh, using one core. Yeah, and an additional question. Uh, so, uh, if you are going through the, that uh, perturbation workload uh, in the background, uh, is this the slow path of that? Like uh, you unmap uh, uh, and and map again, so that you have also the overhead of the uh, of the uh, TLB flushes, or you are using your um, um, caching capabilities or uh, in whatever happens on the vmalloc site is unchanged pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like uh, module alloc calls vmalloc, vmalloc finds an area and uh, gets the page. Uh, the only thing that changes on the pass is alloc pages. Instead of going to the normal page alloc, it goes to the cache uh, that implemented with GFPN mapped, that implements GFPN mapped. So the, the rest of the rest of the allocation and mapping and unmapping is uh, the same. Okay, so you are not benefiting from uh, 
caching with respect to TLB flushes when you are changing mm, pH tables? No, the TLB flushes in okay. the VMALOC area are pretty much the same. Okay. So eventually it can be even faster if you use the caching to the full extent that you do not have to uh, change page tables because it's already you unmapped. You can optimize some of the okay. TLB flashes there, yes. Uh, so uh, my takeaways were that we don't really care for data allocations about direct map uh, fragmentations. And we probably do care uh, for code uh, and uh, it Again, it needs to be benchmarked like uh, Facebook folks say that they have about 1.6, 1.9% of improvements when they do, they do not fragment direct cache, direct map. Uh, and the Thomas and Peter want the module, code, everything called the into Mac pages. So maybe we just uh, concentrate on uh, implementing the code allocations in large pages uh, the way Peter suggested, uh, the way Song is uh, working on now in, in changing how the module alloc works and uh, differentiating different set types of memory so that they will be executable and read-only and it's not will be allocated in a single chunk. And uh, well, my motivation was certainly we should enable secret man by default, like no question about it. And whenever we see that we actually need to deal with direct map fragmentation, we can go back to GFP unmapped and uh, take a look at it again. And uh, something else, a side note I noticed. That wasn't me. <laughs> um, so what, what, what he's talking about here is, is the radix tree. Um, the radix tree uses the top three bits of the flags to encode um, uh, various flags. It doesn't really matter. The point is that the X-ray doesn't need this. And uh, if, if we finish the conversion from radix tree to X-ray, uh, you can have those bits back. It's just that that is like 150 different things that are using the radix tree right now and they need to stop. They really need to stop. But I mean, you know, I, I, I need more minions to, to... Oh, Vishal, you're right here. How nice. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that make a great outreach project. But the, the thing is, it really needs somebody to actually go in and learn how each subsystem is actually using the radix tree to actually do the conversion right because I mean, I've 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 done this like tree-wide kind of conversions for for X-ray, and it's it's really easy to make a mistake and break. Who knows how many subsystems? It's you got to go. You got to know the code that you're conversing is a problem. So the question: If what happens if we increase GFPT to 64 bits? We should just not abuse GFP for every random single purpose thing. Uh, like we have three flags for Kazan tagging, right? But <laughs> that one seemed actually appropriate, you know? So, so, did you run any benchmarks when you would be using two megabyte pages for secret mem? Would that actually make a difference for some of your secret mem workloads that you imagine like we would have for code or like, is, is it just to avoid fragmentation, for, not for to benefit? It's mostly, uh, the major pushback for secret map was you're breaking our direct map, so. Oh, right, because it doesn't need because a direct it map. Because okay. it, it wants to be unmapped from direct map. But uh, when you map it into the user space, like, it, it gets a page cache entry, right, and it gets mapped into the user space, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. It's just that it's did not, you avoid it, it the won't be hot memory it. anyway, so. Okay, uh, but, but what I understand is that we actually do have different classes of direct map users. Some of them don't want write access, some of them don't want any access. Um, are, are there any, uh, any other users? Like A direct map is largely read-write. It's uh, the default. 
sometimes we remove the write. Sometimes we add execute and then remove the write. That what code allocation does mostly. The module alloc does all these tricks. I don't think there are a lot of other places that do anything to direct map. Like okay, if I, you I, if you take a look, if you grab for set memory something, there are not much of them. A, a, most of them go in go from some security reason. Like the page table thing, you would most probably do when you don't want to write. Like the page, page table, table uh, well, page table is read write anyway. Yeah, I think you you mentioned you mentioned. Uh, there was there there was a patch set from Intel uh, about using PKS protection for page tables, and then they protected uh, the same pages, the same pages, the direct map ma mapping, with read only, and you could access a page table for write. Only with the helpers that switched PKS on off or something like that. Okay, so what I'm trying to see is like, is there any generic way we could have something that achieves that? Like, as we learned, like using a GFP flag is most probably the wrong way of doing it, maybe. But that we have some other allocator on top of that that is able to provide such classes in, of memory, or doesn't it make any sense? For most cases, the free path gets really pain in the ass. Okay. Could I ask a more provocative question, which is basically the whole of our theory about using allocators like this and the problems they cause is because we have a theory about the way we think the TLB works. But these results seem to be showing us that the TLB doesn't quite work the way we think it does. And if you, if you look at how machines have evolved, I think we're suffering from two things. One is the huge cost of a TLB miss is because of the hardware page table walker, which we assume is really expensive because it's all indirect mapped. But I think both Intel and AMD are speculating on that one. So the cost of a TLB miss might not be as high as we think. And then the other thing is, I got a funny feeling that this TLB is not 4K, 2 meg, 1 gig. I bet you it's extent-based. So if we're getting an extent-based... That depends on microarchitecture as far as I know. I agree, but I, it's sort of, we, we, we attach a huge amount of memory management to a theory about TLBs that may, may have been right 10 years ago, but may not be right today. And I think we could do with uh, getting some CPU people under torment to see if we can actually clarify exactly what we're supposed to be caring about in the TLB before we start evolving elaborate theories about how we make TLB pressure better. Well, my theory, one of my theories was that uh, normally you have most of your TLB allocated to user space anyway. So whenever you get to kernel, you anyway get TLB miss. I mean, Intel actually tells us how the TLB works, right? There's, there's, there's the L1 TLBs, there's the L2 TLBs, the L2 is actually unified, and the L1 has separate instruction cache for 4K pages and for two megabyte pages. Um, like, they're, they're, they're really pretty open about how it works because this is how you get good performance. And if they were lying about it, people would have figured that out by now. I mean, they, they, they definitely have things which are there in the microarchitecture that, that, that are not public, but it, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all caching. It's, it's not additional features. Actually, what they have, and it's public, that there are partial uh, caches for the page walk. So you page walk only the last one or two levels, and not all five of them, if you miss in the TLB because the partial ways of Zocash. And but, they have additional cache for page walks as well, so. Yeah. But I was also wondering, besides the TLB, uh, what about the, the memory overhead of needing the extra page tables? Is it a concern or, uh, or are they pre-allocated anyway for the for module use, uh, For module use case, I don't think it's that much that we really care. Like, like 4K pay per two megabytes is not a, so. What do you mean? The extra page table level you need a, to do the splits. I anyway do the splits at the point. No, but like, if you avoid like, them. Uh, they, no, uh, today we do the splits. If you do some caching, we might do less splits, although 
No, we, we, we will we'll anyway have to split, but it, uh, let's say with GFPN mapped for modules, you'll have less splits. Uh, because it will be unmapped in the direct map, it will be only mapped in VMALOC. Uh, but I don't think it's that large amount of page tables. That's, yeah. Yeah, but maybe if we enable the secret map, can it happen that a few secret map pages will be spread all over the direct map and then each uh, of the Two okay. megabyte chunk would need a I, new four kilobyte. I wouldn't page expect ticket. massive usage of secret mem in large. It's it's are limited anyway, so you can't get more than sixty four unless you root and you really want it. I mean, more than sixty four k. So there will be some overhead, but uh, adding another cache to page allocator probably not worth it, and increasing page block by four bits, like uh, we'll offset that from the other side. I wonder how how much does the cache prevents time the direct map being fragmented? It's order of magnitude. If I didn't, I didn't try, I didn't bring it. But if you look at the amount of two meg and one gig splits in the Procvm stat, it brings it down to order by order of magnitude. Then, without the caches, are they fragmented to or 4K mappings or the cache? isn't necessarily fragmented because uh, the two MEC page is removed from the direct map. And then, uh, uh, let's say for modules, uh, the, 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 the same memory is uh, mapped in the uh, Vimalak area. So Vimalak area, it's anyway mapped with 4K pages. And in direct map, uh, it doesn't need to be fragmented because the entire two MEGs are removed from the direct map. I mean, we wrote the cache and you run the background of and is it fragment? How much is it fragmented with the background? Uh, so for as long as page alloc micro benchmarks run, I've got uh, several uh, hundred of uh, splits, uh, and uh, with uh, the cache of GFP unmapped, I've got several tens of splits. Then says it's time, so thank you.